Hi, welcome. My name is Dr. Marcy Stone, and I am here to speak to you about your course, Leading Organizational Change. This is the video that accompanies the first case study. So a little bit of an overview of this case study. So we have Lays College. This is a small for-profit nursing college. There are roughly 400 students. There are eight directors, and we have a campus president that has a liaison fair leadership style. So Lays College is a small for-profit nursing college that faced organizational changes due to the pandemic. The college was forced to quickly move from an online format, even though only a few general education classes had previously been offered online. Lays College has approximately 400 students and as I said, Brian, the campus president, has over eight years of experience and his leadership style is liaison fair. So enrollments have been stable for several years. The faculty has had low turnover and they were able to retain students. Brian's leadership style is also called delegate and most of the campus directors stayed because of his strong ability to manage. Directors that reported directly to the campus president include the registrar, the librarian, the office manager, which who handles all of the human resources, the dean of education, the financial aid director, the career services director, uh, the dean of nursing, and then also the director of admissions. So Lays College is one of 40 campuses that are owned by a larger corporation called Precision Management or PM. And during the pandemic, PM was awarded $30 million from the Department of Education as part of a governmental package to assist schools and students during the transition to online education. So half of these funds were awarded to students and the other half was spent on technology by PM. So they had one year to use or lose those funds. So PM took roughly six months to determine how the technology funds should be used. Once they had a list of products to purchase, they moved quickly to implement as many technological changes as possible in those last six months. So after the 2008 recession, for-profit <laughs> colleges had a significant reduction in enrollments and many colleges closed as a result of that recession. So the colleges that survived had to drastically cut costs and become more efficient with what systems they already had in place. For several years, it seemed that finding additional funds to update technology was not really a priority. The pandemic added another layer of difficulty for those colleges that operated mostly in-person classes. And for those colleges with older technology, moving quickly to online classes was even more challenging. Organizational change frequently occurs in every industry. And the one thing that propels that change is technology. So technology changes frequently happen with upgrades, with new software, with new systems. And it's important that each business maintains and then keeps pace with those changes, or they may be considered obsolete and the business may eventually close as a result. In the case of PM, the older technology they were using was becoming outdated and replacing or purchasing new technology was very costly. They were excited about the possibility of updating technology, but they were not sure where to start because they didn't have a plan in the uh, very beginning. So communication plays a vital role when you're making organizational changes. Most of the communication between PM and the campus occurred between various departments at PM and the campus president. And he was responsible for relaying that information to the rest of the campus. So here are some of the changes that happened as a result of technology at Lays uh, College. So there were three main changes. The first one was the learning management system. So Horizon, the learning management system that they used, it was immediately expanded so that it could be used campus-wide as classes move to an online setting very quickly. 
Before the pandemic, PM was only using Horizon for online general education classes, and they were not used by most of the nursing faculty. So there were some initial issues with faculty and staff learning how to use the system. As no formal training really took place, and users had to research and speak to other employees to better understand its use. So the Dean of Education quickly became the resource for understanding how to use the Horizon system. And most faculty needed help with that usage, and then there were also grading issues as well. So after these initial issues that they had, which lasted a few months, faculty and staff then were able to easily use Horizon. When classes returned to being held on campus, Horizon was still used to support the in-class environment. Then the next organizational change was new software. So in some cases, PM ensured that staff and faculty were trained efficiently to use the new technology. In other cases, PM would purchase the new software and then attempt to train staff and faculty how to use it, only to find later that it really wasn't being used. PM purchased another techno technology system that was an in-house social media type software called Blend, and this could be used by faculty, staff, and students. The system was intended to allow for better communication between students and employees. So PM used steps in the Lewin's change model to help employees adjust to the change of having to use Blend on a regular basis. When the employees were first trained in on-campus meetings, there was an excitement about using the new system, but over time it was discovered that most students and employees did not use Blend. And then the third change was a new phone system. So this was just another technology purchase that PM, that was a new one. It was a more expensive system. It was a little bit of a complicated phone system. So each employee received a new phone but training on how to use the system was not given. So as a result, most employees used the phone's basic functions just as they had with their previous phones. A few employees at Lace College discovered that the new phones could be used as a PA system throughout the campus to make announcements, and they could text students or staff in bulk from those phones. The phone system had numerous features that most employees were not using. And at one point, it was discovered that the phone system, uh, the phone system's features were being fully used at other campuses, but not at this local college campus. So all of the changes that PM and the local Lays College had to initiate, um, and in some cases, the faculty and staff were unaware of why changes were taking place in the first place. So there was some confusion about the system itself and why it was needed. It was easy to look back and understand why there was confusion and why issues occurred in the first place. But at the time, the leadership at PM thought that they were implementing the organizational changes correctly. They did the best job that they could with the information that they had at the time. So this case study provides an opportunity for leaders to read about the issues incurred at PM and Lays College and then make decisions in the future based on some of those mistakes. So this case study looks at four different leadership styles, and there's quite a few exam questions on the, the test that will cover these leadership styles. So there's numerous types, but these four are kind of the main focus of this case study. And um, the top three there are really kind of your classical leadership styles that cover um, a broad range of management and how they may lead people. Um, so these three, uh, autocratic, democratic, and liaison fit, kind of those typical ones that you might see in business today. So an autocratic leader, um, an example of this might be somebody who is, can be very stern and um, may not really seem like they're open to listening to employees' ideas. They're very direct, um, they may want to make decisions very quickly, and they don't really want to be held back by taking into account other people's 
thoughts or opinions. So this type of leader can be really good in a crisis situation where decisions have to be made very quickly. And they can, in a lot of cases, really help a company get out of serious problems that might occur during a crisis. Uh, that's the good and kind of the bad side of that one. And then we have a democratic leader. So this is the type of leader who really wants to take some input from employees. So they may want to understand how their team thinks about an issue. They will ask them, they will poll them uh, to try to figure out like what type of, like how their team really feels about something. The great side of that is they're taking into account everyone's opinions, everyone on the team and their opinions. Um, but it may take them longer to make a decision as a result of that because they're waiting for feedback. Um, so that of both sides in a sense of your democratic leader. And then we have the liaison fair leader. So remember, this is the campus president, the campus president's leadership style. So this leader is going to rely on employee kind of help make that change and help make their employees feel comfortable with that change. So this type of leader really allows like maybe the people who directly report to these they're going to give that those people a lot of freedom to really do their job um, and then in return most employees will step up to that challenge and really take ownership of their job and their position um, the downside of that type of leadership style is if you have someone who really may not know how to self-manage they may not be uh, like there may not be a lot of follow through with that type of a leader to ensure that they're doing what they need to. Uh, that type of leader really just trusts that everybody knows what they're doing um, and will do their job well. And as we all know in business, that isn't always the case. So again, of each of these leadership styles, they really do have a, you know, some good aspects to that character of that leader. Um, and then there's always going to be those negative or downside of aspects that you might see. And when you have employees, like in the liaison affair, when you have employees who are not doing their job um, and are not being followed up with to ensure that they're doing their job, it can make the workplace a little chaotic when that happens. So a good leader kind of recognize that and maybe assist employees with that change process. So transformational leadership uh, styles are really good when it comes to change. This is the type of leader that most people would like to have in place when they're trying to enact change. These are the type of people who tend to be um, it's very easy to follow in a sense because they're very positive about the change. They understand the change. They want to do what they can to support the employees while they're going through those changes. They tend to create maybe a better working relationship with people. So they're usually authentic, humble, very self-aware. They're also able to listen to employees' ideas with an open mind and then really respond without judging. Um, they may utilize some of those ideas, give credit back to those people who gave the ideas. They're also really good collaborators. And this kind of allows them to maybe have, kind of see the team really as a whole, um, or maybe conduct research before making a decision, kind of prevent any issues from occurring. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the case study questions. So we have five questions here that we're going to review that are actual questions from the exam for the case study. So this is the first one. So the campus president's leadership style is liaison affair. He listens to employees when issues arise, asks employees how the issue might be handled. So what is this an example of? So we have three options. It's either micromanaging employees, giving employees autonomy, or emphasizing change and transformation. So the answer is B, giving employees autonomy. And this one covers um, a course learning outcome, which is analyze critical people skills to effectively lead others through change in a given organization. 
So this one is fairly straightforward, this question. It's asking you about a liaison fair leader, and they really are good at giving employees autonomy. And the only downside to that is there isn't a lot of follow through to ensure that each employee is doing exactly what they should be. Um, but yes, so the answer to this one would be giving employees autonomy. Then we have the second uh, case study question. So this one is PM used Lewin's change model to help students and staff adjust to the new phone system, the new blend system. So which of, actually not the new phone system, adjusting to using the blend system. So which of the following Lewin steps would be most useful to help PM encourage employees to enact change? So we have three answers. We have take action, make changes, move people. We have review goals and implement the plan in small steps. And then the last one there is explain why something is not working, follow through and force change. So this one, the answer is take action, make changes and move people. So that is for Lewin's change model, that is really what I'm trying to allow leaders to do. So really figure out what action do we need to take? You're taking that action, you're making those changes, and then you're trying to engage your people. You're trying to make sure that they understand what the changes are and why they're important. And then for this one, it actually covers two separate course learning outcomes. So we have apply well-known change models to drive organizational change in a given organization, and then also differentiate long range strategies to lead the organization to successful outcomes. Then we have case study question number three. So when we're attempting to make organizational changes at Lays College, why is it important to focus on employees and encourage them to make change? So the A is, should B is if employees do not make the necessary changes, the plan will fail, or C, employees enjoy change and training them allows the opportunity to change. So the answer here is B. So if your employees, and it's one thing that we've talked about consistently in this course, so if employees do not want to make the changes, the, the plan will fail. It is highly important as a leader that you ensure all employees are on board, all employees are being trained. Um, and it's important because history has shown us that if the employees are not fully engaged in the changes, the change. And then for this one, we again have two learning course outcomes. So interpret the reasons organizations fail at implementing change and mitigating strategies. And then also um, analyzing critical people skills to effectively lead others through change in a given organization. And then our fourth question that we're going to cover is about emotional intelligence. So it's an important part of any leader's skill set. So if staff is upset with any changes that need to be made during change management, how can the campus management at Lays College utilize emotional intelligence to calm their fears? So we have three examples here. A is by showing empathy, he may gain different perspectives of the change and how the change will impact them. B is by holding an all staff meeting to again discuss what changes need to occur and when they need to be completed. And then C is by asking the staff to complete the changes and explain how important the changes are to the corporate office. And the answer here is A. So emotional intelligence really is about um, managing yourself, your emotions, and then other people. So it's really important to understand what emotional intelligence is. And for those managers who have a high level of emotional intelligence, they tend to connect a little bit better with their employees. So by showing empathy, he may gain different perspectives of the change and how the change will impact them. Um, and this can be as easy as checking in daily with employees, asking questions like, what do you think about the changes or how are the changes going in your area? Do you see any issues? Um, what's going well? You know, it's asking those questions, kind of checking in 
and showing empathy for what they're going through. For some employees, change is going to be very, hard, very, very difficult. Uh, for other employees, it will be very easy. But just by checking, kind of asking questions, you're using that emotional intelligence that is so important in leadership and management today. So for this one, we again have two course learning outcomes. So determine the scale and scope of organizational change initiatives and analyze methodologies to plan change initiatives with appropriate measurements in a given organization. All right, and then here is question number five. What is the best way the campus president at Lays College can measure the performance of the directors and ensure that the change process is effectively taking place? So for A, we have created a performance plan with each director to ensure that they follow through. B is meet with each director regularly, ask for change plan updates and discuss issues that arise. And then C is ask the directors to meet with the people at the headquarters and do what they're directed to do. And the answer here is B. So meet with each director regularly, ask for change plan updates and discuss issues that arise. So this is something that's really important in either a one on one or maybe just a daily check in to make sure everything's going well. If your change is being implemented quickly, like if you have a week maybe to make those changes, there may be, it may be important for any leader to check in hourly at that point. If you're trying to get a change done in a week, it might be something where you're constantly looking to see how it's going. If the change is something that will be implemented over time and you have a month or six months, it might be something where you're checking in every week or every other week. Um, it just will depend on the change itself. And so, and you do, you want to check in, you want to keep notes. Like the last time we talked, you were working on this. How is that going? Um, and so it's kind of asking for those regular updates and then discussing or helping them get through um, any of those issues that arise. And sometimes that means removing obstacles as well out of their boat. And as a leader, that is what is most important. It's, it's important that you are checking in, that you are helping your employees to get through this, and also just ensuring that you're clearing the way for them to be able to effectively make that change. And so for this last question, we again have two uh, course learning outcomes that this, this question covers. So it's determine the scale and scope of organizational change initiatives and then analyze methodologies to plan change initiatives with appropriate measurements in a given organization. All right, so we have covered uh, case study one. We've talked a little bit about leadership styles and why they're so important. We've ran through five of your actual exam questions that are on the exam. And then uh, this is a conclusion. So I just wanted to say thank you. Again, my name is Dr. Marcy Stone, and uh, I am just here to help you uh, navigate through this study guide and or this case study, sorry, <laughs> and just go through these questions. So thank you.